but I think she has the, the capability. Cool. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and uh, welcome to the first of our uh, Backbone Connect webinars for 2024. It's good to be back. Uh, it's John Archer, Solutions Director from Backbone Connect here. The last time we were together, our previous webinar um, addressed the challenges of uh, working securely from anywhere using the power of uh, SASE Secure Access Service Edge. But um, I'm excited uh, to crack, uh, crack on with 2024 and um, you know how to potentially secure your business and unlock your business potential with um, Microsoft. Um, yeah, with the, in spite of the Chancellor's upbeat uh, budget yesterday, we know that there are economic headwinds and uh, many are experiencing um, challenges at the moment, seeking to gain competitive advantage uh, and many are taking the first tentative steps into uh, leveraging the wonderful world of AI. Some organisations further down that road than others. Um, and others might be holding back due to you know concerns around uh, data privacy or uh, or compliance. I mean, last week at uh, at Excel, Excel at a tech show, um, one of the presenters was recounting how a head of uh, risk at one of the city institutions not far from our office, they're more worried about the risk of uh, impact on their operations or a cyber breach or data loss than they are people defaulting on mortgages or, or loans. So it goes to show how secure uh, security uh, is taken very, very seriously. Uh, at Backbone Connect, we want our customers to thrive uh, and to be given the best possible uh, support. So we want to help secure your business and um, unlock your potential. In the next 30 minutes or so, um, you'll hear from my colleagues I'll introduce in a second. We'll be having some interactive polls. Do please use the questions uh, facility within Teams and we'll try and get to as many of them as we can. So without um, further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, good morning, Anisha. Good morning. Uh, Anisha Harani uh, is head of our uh, customer success team uh, here at Backbone Connect. They look after north of 350 uh, UK business customers. And um, yeah, we know that uh, cybersecurity is a big, um, big theme for them. Uh, you know, they depend on our uh, expertise and services to operate their businesses. Next, Millie. Millie May, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Millie, I know you're a Microsoft specialist uh, with over um, five years, uh, five years experience and, um, you know, pretty much immersed in the last 12 months of um, uh, uh, of that time with the uh, Microsoft uh, new AI digital assistant uh, co-pilot, which we're really, really keen to hear about a little bit later on. And, uh, uh, and finally, uh, Joe, welcome. Joe's our head of uh, managed security services, uh, the latest addition to our um, senior team here at Backbone Connect, just underlining our commitment and determination to ensure that our customers receive the best possible advice and have the strongest uh, security foundations that uh, that we can. So uh, really, really keen to have you um, support us today, uh, Joe. Thank you for joining. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. No problem at all. So what I'd uh, what I'd like to do uh, first of all is just to um, uh, start off with the uh, the first of our um, first of our polls, really before we um, we start with uh, start with Anisha. Um, so let me uh, pop a, a poll in a uh, in the ch in the chat here just to get a better handle on uh, you know what people are looking to uh, get out of the uh, the webinar today. That should be showing up on your screen. Uh, do please make a selection, and we'll um, get to those uh, get to those during our our Q and A, or try and cover them uh, in more detail during the uh, during the content. So do please make your submissions, and hit done when you're when you're ready. Brilliant. Yeah, we're all keen to look at uh, look at Copilot in more um, uh, in more detail. I'm sure. Okay. Fantastic and working securely. Brilliant, brilliant. OK, on that basis, I'll close the uh, the poll for now. Um, Anisha, great to uh, great to see you. Um, you know, you and I were uh, were, were, were talking uh, just earlier, uh, just earlier this week about, uh, you know, preparations for the um, preparations for the webinar. Um, you know, as a as a customer success team, uh, what, do, what are you guys already uh, doing to help our customers compete? and stay secure. Yeah, so uh, John, we 
help our customers um, by asking lots and lots of questions. So we've been carrying out 360 degree security assessments, uh, which helps us and the customer understand what their cyber hygiene is like and what the security posture looks like. Um, and through these assessments, we can then provide informed advice on what the exposure is. Um, but we've also got to consider what action they need to take based on the industry they're in and what they're trying to achieve. What is the knock on effect going to be if there was reputational damage? What impact uh, would it have on the business if the users couldn't access the network? Um, one size doesn't fit all, so we're there to kind of understand what the risks are and what the impact would be to the customer and then help them plan forward with that. Cool. And um, pretty much during those customer uh, in interactions, what have you discovered about the um, you know modern work practices and the uh, adoption of, uh, say, SaaS applications? So actually, that's an interesting question. We've got a mix of customers. So we've got some who have, um, you know, adopted uh, cloud applications and, um, and really adapted to remote working, while others are not quite there yet, but they're facing increasing pressure to start their digital transformation. What I can say is for those that have adopted cloud, we found that about 90% are using Microsoft. Well, wow. yeah, I was going to say, can you share any more about what you've discovered during the assessments, uh, adoption of apps and subscriptions? Yeah, so customers are concerned about the cybersecurity um, and really aware of the potential impact on the attack. Um, and despite their best efforts to mitigate risks, because there's so many options and so many players in the market, it can become really difficult to choose the right solution. So with the best intentions, you know, we go out and we make choices and we get these applications onboarded, um, but what we found is that customers have got more than that what is necessary because they're not fully utilizing the applications they've already got. Um, and what happens is when you've got multiple applications that are um, conflicting is the reason that you purchase that subscription or, or that product or service isn't fulfilling what you want it to do because there's a clash and the functionalities are overlapping. So you're ending up with more subscriptions than you need, which results in you know overspending and, and an underutilization of, of the capabilities. Understood. Thank you. Are there any um, the sort of insights or themes that you can share? What seems to be top of mind for our, our customers presently? Yeah, so uh, cybersecurity uh, was typically about protecting your network, um, but with the increased adoption of cloud technology, remote working and third party vendors, the traditional perimeter based approach for security is, is, is no longer sufficient, right? It's about protecting your identity and your credentials. A, um, a breach can um, give attackers access to everything you have access to. So we're becoming more and more aware of this as business businesses and customers. So um, I'd say it's really important to consider security um, beyond the four walls of your business. Uh, and actually, the new perimeter is is your identity. Brilliant. Thanks, Anisha. Really um, uh, gets us uh, gets us good handle on where our uh, customers are. Uh, at the moment and, uh, and a great segue. Uh, Joey, in fact, before I uh, bring you in, I think what we'll do is we'll launch the um, uh, second of our uh, polls just to get a sense of how people are feeling in terms of their, um, uh, you know, in terms of their current security posture. So I'm just going to fire that little um, poll up in the uh, uh, in the chat there just to get a sense of where where people are. And uh, if you hit your uh, selection uh, and, and submit, we should be able to see that um, building on the screen. OK, I'm seeing some sixes and sevens. We got some nervous characters looking at uh, adoption of uh, adoption of AI, which is completely understandable. And that's the that's the theme of this uh, theme of this webinar. So, OK, well, hit done on your screen when you're uh, when you're ready. I'm going to close that one off and I'm going to hand the um, hand the floor over to my colleague uh, Joe, Joe Burtnick. Over to you, buddy. Thanks, John. Appreciate the introduction. And it's great to be part of the team here at Backbone Connect because the need for our customers to stay secure, whether they're in our Backbone Connected buildings or anywhere they work, is so crucial for our customers today. 
And as they not only look at the security of their infrastructure and how they're using the cloud, of course, the ability to leverage AI is really becoming a game changer for how organizations think about their technology roadmap for 2024. I mean, unlike the adoption we've seen across many different technologies over the last 20 years, much that I've seen personally, it's amazing the speed that AI has been able to impact what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, whether you're using different solutions from different vendors, there's lots of different AI capabilities, and AI can, of course, transform not only how we work day-to-day, -day, how we interact with our customers, and what really develops the core intellectual property of our business, if you will. And so there's a lot of potential with AI, but unfortunately, the concerns around it are significant. Uh, the need to make sure that the answers that AI presents to the users is accessing information that is important and more important, limited to what they only should see is crucial. So understanding that you have the right security foundations in place to enable the adoption of this technology and ensure that users can effectively and securely use it and pro are providing the answers that are appropriate for what they should have access to within the organization. We've already heard some horror stories of you know, submitting things to AI, either private information up to public AI services, because you know, it's the uh, only thing they can do to, to have it uh, assess and, and provide the content they're looking for, or even being able to go through and uh, uh, leverage AI in a more profound way to be able to analyze their customer data, et cetera. So being able to use this safe and securely is a, a foundational concern for a lot of customers as they look to 2024. And 2024, I think, is going to be an area where there's a, a huge advance in this. And that's part of the reason that not only I've come to Backbone Connect, but why we're focusing more intently on security across our entire portfolio offering, the ability to help our customers stay secure, stay safe, and be productive is foundational to what we deliver as an organization and being able to enhance a number of the core capabilities we already deliver with better insight, helping us collectively stay on the front foot with attackers, as well as helping customers secure the new perimeter as Anisha mentioned, which is identity, and help their whole business stay secure and able to leverage the cloud, leverage all of these new capabilities in ways that can really improve their overall productivity. So the, one of the first things I'd like to announce is some of the enhancements we're making to our core network service delivery and how we're trying to help our, our customers, if you will, lead a collective defense against attackers. With our core network, we see and transmit and, and secure a huge amount of data and huge amount of connectivity for our customers. And being able to ensure that the data that's transversing that network, if you will, is not communicating with known threat actors, that the endpoints and the devices that are communicating across that network are secure and, and free from vulnerabilities and help our customers, if you will, they can be on the front foot in making sure they can close those potential risks and identify threats more effectively is really core to our services. And so we'll be instituting new measures to be more proactive in scanning for vulnerable assets and identifying and, and sharing that information with clients, identifying assets that may be uh, targets of attack, if you will, by looking at global threat intelligence and combining that with security monitoring and response so that we can help identify where behaviors and communications identify potential risks to the organization, whether it's yours or, of course, our collective network that we all work together with it. And so one of the aspects of this will also be working closely with our clients to take the threat intelligence we take from global platforms, over 65 trillion signals per day, can be ingested within this platform and used to be able to identify suspicious behaviors across different levels of communication, customer traffic, and help us identify those. And then most importantly, close the gap with our customers, identifying where those uh, issues need to be addressed, communicating quickly with our clients and helping address and respond to those attacks in a highly automated fashion. 
Now, these new capabilities will help us stay on the front foot. And a lot of that goes into the technology that underpins our core network and some of the managed services we deliver for our clients today. And so as part of this, we'll also be refreshing some of the equipment that's used within the network to provide deeper capability for detection and response, to be able to provide higher levels of security, and to be able to enable a, this collective network of monitoring threat intelligence and proactive response to potential attacks within our organizations. So we're excited to announce some of these changes. Of course, our customers that have our managed firewall services will be seeing these almost immediately. And as we continue to roll this out, we'll be making these services available to our clients to expand across not only the backbone connected buildings, but their other sites as well. So we're excited to kind of lead the charge with this collective defense. In addition to that, we'll be working closely with our customers to deploy secure foundations for how they secure not just the network portion of their infrastructure, but of course, all of the integrated elements that really help them stay safe and be productive. Starting with security management and identity, helping them ensure that they have the right policies and guardrails in place to really embed security as part of their DNA so that Security is not something that gets addressed after the fact or added in later or hopefully is enabled. It's something that's simply on by default and helping these core policies and guidelines that help our customers identify where those gaps are and identify and continue to close those are crucial. And so being able to I, implement new technologies around identity protection, such as multi-factor authentication, or even passwordless protection, so that users never even have to authentic, you know, their identity, their biometrics automatically log them in so they can have as a frictionless of a user experience as possible for being able to interact and stay secure and productive without needing to add one more application to their device or one more process to how they stay and implement security being able to help our customers identify who has access to what information, because as we start to roll out more of the capabilities of AI to be able to replace search and help us find answers to more interesting questions, it's what the users have access to that will provide the answers that AI will deliver. Unfortunately, through our management over many projects and different initiatives, a single user may have access to information that they probably shouldn't. And so helping our customers put in good data controls to identify who has access to information, ensuring that before they roll out AI technology and provide that, act, um, that capability, they've evaluated the access that a user has so that they don't get unintended answers to questions. This all comes together in helping us ensure that all of the foundational elements of security are in place. We're across identity, device compliance to make sure not only who and what are accessing our data are secure, but also automating the process of threat defense and being able to have the insight, the detection and response capabilities across all the critical ingress points of threat actors into our networks, whether it's the endpoint, email, being able to look at cloud application usage and how they're sharing information, all of these being able to come together into a single view of being able to defend against threats in a very unified way. And so helping our customers deploy these foundations are critical to helping them stay productive as an organization and to deliver this security, as I said, as part of their DNA, leveraging the tools that are already available to them to implement what is the, the core elements of security, not only to defend against attacks, prevent ransomware and the kind of existential threats that those can be for many organizations, but really enabling new technology. And that journey for us starts with, as Anisha mentioned earlier, 360 assessments that we're taking our customers through now. This helps them understand where they're at in their journey what their overall security posture is today, and what are the next steps to getting more secure. And in many cases, identifying the quick wins where we can enable very frictionless technology to secure identities, provide better security across endpoints, ensure that users can't take sensitive data out of the company email 
and share it on their personal email as an example. All of those are the elements that go into understanding where you're at, what your posture is today. Looking at things like your Microsoft Secure Score, for example, for identifying your exact posture point and what are the next steps to improving security. For many of our customers, then we then help them turn on those features, roll that out across their end user community, ensure that everyone has MFA and passwordless security by default, that everyone has the right security and capabilities across all of their cloud applications, and then help our customers optimize that on for the long term. Many cloud uh, solutions have continued to grow in their security capability, and among them, Microsoft has been really the leader in a lot of innovation with over $4 billion uh, a year invested in security. That level of innovation is impressive, but it's also overwhelming for a lot of customers trying to stay up with the latest features, making sure that their secure scores stay where they want them to be. And so helping our customers manage that in the long term and optimize that so they can get the most value from their existing technology is really key to those three steps of better security. And we look forward to working with our customers and helping them take them through that journey. As I mentioned, a partnership with Microsoft and for many of our customers because the technologies they already have in place is a big piece of this. Microsoft is a foundational technology for many organizations to be productive. And as part of that technology suite, Microsoft has a suite of security solutions that underpin that core capability. Microsoft Defender, Intune, Purview, of course, Entra or Active Directory AD, all work together to help a customer stay secure, protect their identities, their devices, and of course, their networks and their data that all transmit that information is so critical information that they move across their organization. And so being able to leverage the capabilities of all of these technologies is really going to be part of the services we can deliver for our customers going forward. And so in addition to using the technology broadly across our core connectivity, we'll also be able to expand into additional services helping our customers stay safe and more productive wherever they are. So within our secure connectivity using Microsoft Sentinel as our core SIM and SOAR platform, leveraging Microsoft Threat Intelligence and its in signals to be able to inform and advise how we protect and um, defend our customers. Being able to help them stay more productive with Microsoft 365, deploying those foundational technologies that are part of the license that many customers already have today, like Defender, Entra, Purview, and others, so that all of the applications and information they're using within SharePoint teams, et cetera, stay safe and secure. And of course, looking at Microsoft Copilot, that's the foundational technology, then security that really enables the power of that capability. Many of our customers, as Anisha mentioned, have converged communications or using Teams phone and Teams room. So being able to help them do use those technologies securely and as they continue this cloud journey with not just applications like Microsoft 365, but also workloads within the cloud, backup and other capabilities using Microsoft Azure, we'll be able to expand our services to be able to really help customers stay safe and secure productive as they continue to adopt more and more cloud capability. So we're excited for this partnership and the tools and resources it helps us deliver to our customers and more importantly, help their businesses be more secure and more productive. And I have to say there's nothing that I've seen recently that can be more productive having been a user for the last six weeks than Copilot for Microsoft 365. Um, it is, uh, Definitely a technology that I can say is uh, been able to help reduce the mundane and give me more time for the creative. So with that said, hey, let me turn it back to John and uh, we'll introduce our next speaker as well. Thank you, Joe. That's a cracking, uh, cracking update and a, 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 and a terrific, um, terrific segue into a, an exciting area. Um, what we're going to do before I uh, give the floor over to um, Millie is to launch the next of our uh, polls because we want to just get a sense of uh, where the audience are with their um, uh, adoption. It's uh, again a, another inline poll. Uh, you can make more than one uh, selection if you wish, but uh, yeah, we'd be really, really interested to see where you uh, where you are. 
with your uh, current 365 um, suite. Again, it's a very broad suite, and uh, as we'll find out from um, uh, Millie shortly, it's a very, very interesting. Um, uh, if you thought that uh, uh, Microsoft Digital Assistants were clippy back from 15 years ago, uh, things have moved on. So uh, buckle up, brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting a, a feel for where, uh, where the, uh, the that is completely are. unfair yeah. to compare Copilot to Clippy. Hundred percent. There we go. <laughs> Even though I think I did that on my own LinkedIn page. At one point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Right. Well, that gives us uh, that gives us a sense. Then, if you've got any uh, questions, use the question um, uh, in the menu bar. But I'd like to introduce uh, Millie Millie May from uh, from from Bytes. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, lovely to meet you all. Uh, yes, Copilot. Wow. Um, I've never known users be so um, encompassing of something since Clippy. Uh, for those of us that are, are old enough, we thought Clippy was pretty cutting edge back then. Um, but like, um, yeah, like Joe says, we um, Copilot is a bit more than that. Um, and Copilot has arrived. There are various Copilots, but the first one that is available for companies to use today is Copilot for Microsoft 365. Um, I know some of you might have some experience of using some AI technology um, previously, but this is the first one that's been launched by Microsoft um, that is done in a secure fashion. So it uses large language models and Microsoft Graph, and in this particular one, all of the Microsoft 365 apps and the internet. And every single organization, and I know a lot of you uh, looking at the poll here, uh, there's a lot of you that will be using these applications day in, day out. So that could be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. And for most of us in the modern era, Teams, uh, we, we tend to use Teams more and more frequently now. Just want to add, um, did notice on the poll, we've got a mix of people that are still on premise. And for uh, Copilot uh, for Microsoft 365, it's important to note that it works with that data that is in the cloud. Um, and um, those that have started to use Copilot, the lucky ones uh we've been using it for the six the last six to nine months i've personally been working on copilot for the last 12 months helping companies um, get ai ready and you're going to hear that a lot um but the information that's coming out of our early adoption program is quite staggering the percentage of um productivity uh, it is enabling users to do without um making difficulty with security so they're they're increasing their productivity um without having a threat to their secure school and i think that's really important for for leaders and companies to have that reassurance so again we know that there are open ai there's uh chat um other chat models out there but the copilot for microsoft 365 does have security at the heart of it um, it is compliant. It gives you that privacy. And when you use um, Copilot, there are two sides to it. There's a work side and a web side, and that enables the user to, to use in both functions there. And we all have a responsibility to be responsible with our AI use. Um, so Joe has mentioned this earlier. It's about your data, knowing where it is in the cloud, who has access to it? Um, and as uh, Anisha also mentioned, um, making sure that that data is protected, that that security element is there. And again, that can be quite overwhelming. You might have various different products that you're using for that. Um, and again, the guys at Backbone Connect are able to really help uh, do that assessment for you with their, their 360 uh, security assessment. So it's important to know what your data is, where it is, who's got access to it, secure those, that network, the endpoints, because again, that's um, in modern working life, that, you know, it's more complex, it's identity, it's device, it's, you know, the art of hybrid working. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna um, show you a little video of uh, the highlights of what you can expect with Microsoft Copilot for 365.
usually takes a couple of seconds to spool up, Millie, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Sorry. Coming through. Let's try in there. There we go. Yeah. Hey, John, is the video coming through for everyone? Oh, good. Brilliant. Well, I hope you'll all agree that's a little bit uh, more advanced than Mr. Clippy. Um, and John, thank you for bopping away to the uh, the jazzy music in the background there. So uh, the co-pilot for Microsoft 365 can help all employees within your business. And one of the questions I know Anisha has been getting from uh, the customer base is, you know, who who would I put on to co-pilot first? So uh, here are some of the suggestions uh, that we have. So anyone that's in marketing, um, they will get great productivity gains because of the create uh, the creativity aspect to Copilot. So it can really jumpstart that process by generating um, all the ideas. Now that could be both across Word or it could be across uh, PowerPoint. Um, for salespeople, there is a fantastic section in there that really helps them keep on top of all of their Outlook and Teams activity, especially in a hybrid working environment. So again, they've got access to real-time uh, notifications from their customers, whether that be in Teams or Outlook, and it will span across those. The same for your customer services team. Again, you'll find uh, that they will use it extensively in applications throughout the M365 suite. Um, again, finance will use it very much so for uh, Excel and data and IT will probably use it in loop. And they are suggesting for HR that you would use it for uh, OneNote. So you can see on the screen, it talks quite easily about how you just click on the Copilot um, icon within the application itself and it will help you compose first drafts. Uh, it also helps summarize lengthy text. So again, if you deal with a lot of copy, um, that's very, very helpful. As I mentioned with sales, again, in Outlook, it really helps you summarize. And for those of you that aren't in sales, it's really handy when you are suddenly brought into a very long email thread and you're like, my gosh, what, what am I actually being asked to do here? There's a fantastic summarize button that will help you get up to speed on what's happened prior to you coming into that email thread. All of us are using Teams. It's very much part of our everyday modern working life. Whether you're using Teams just as a message functionality, whether you're using it in conjunction with SharePoint, um, and also, as Anisha said, there's lots of you out there are using uh, for Teams phone and Teams rooms. So, again, very much uh, central to our modern working life. Excel, gosh, you're either a, it's a bit Marmite, you're either a lover or a hater of Excel. But what Copilot does so well is help, help upskill users. So for those of you that get Excel, you're very competent in all of the different formulas and pivot tables. Copilot in Excel really helps those that aren't. Um, so again, a lot of people are, oh, thank goodness for Copilot. Um, and again, looped great, especially in the, the modern work and how we have to collaborate across various departments. Uh, again, it could be various um, locations. Uh, we're not always uh, in the office at the same time. So again, really helping you work in real time there. And OneNote, um, again, really helpful across lots of different departments. Uh, but again, for those that are note taking heavy, um, it really does help with organization, summaries, helping the follow on from meetings if you're using it for your notes to uh, set up 
um, follow on tasks and activities. So those that are of us that have had the pleasure of using Copilot uh, for the last six to nine months, these are the stats that have come out about how helpful Copilot has been. So the obvious one is spending less time processing emails. If you come back from holiday, your inbox will be full. It really does help summarize the content that's in there. You can prioritize by people, by uh, email type, whether it's someone sent in a quote or someone's got a you know, um, uh, an order to process or there, are, you know, um, an account that you want to keep up to date with, um, it can help there. Joe mentioned earlier, actually, about saving time on mundane tasks. Um, so John uh, here uh, will have spent time creating the polls. Copilot can help generate that. It could be something that you need for internal communication and you need to put together um, you know, a poster or a Microsoft form, again, it can help with those kind of mundane tasks. This is the one that I found the most valuable is saving time finding files. So those of us that have gone from on-premise environments into the cloud, we're using SharePoint, we've got T um, Teams and Outlook, it helps you find um, content that's not just from Outlook, that's not just from Teams or from the SharePoint files, and it will look across all of those. Um, and I think we can all resonate with the fact that sometimes you know you've sent a, a, an email in Outlook, and when you go to use the search functionality in Outlook, you still can't find it. Copilot is very, very good at that. And for those that have to create content, um, a staggering 85% have said that it gets a good first draft the first time. And again, I think we can all um, embrace that. It is a whole new way of working um, and it is, you know, it's a combination of software and culture, but without having a negative impact on security. Um, and again, our modern working life is very different. Um, and Anisha is getting that feedback constantly um, from the clients that you, you know, that they have. The common questions I hear, and again, Anisha uh, will probably uh, back me up on this, is, you know, we want to look at Copilot. We want to start using AI, AI to transform our business. And who, who gets it first? Um, so, again, to help you, the first Copilot out there is for Microsoft 365. So, again, real users that are uh, every day um, will get the most benefit. How do you get employees uh, up and running quickly? Speak to the speak to the team here at Backbone Connect. They will make sure that you've got the security and you've got the data controls, access policies in place so that your staff can start using the productivity gains. And how do you measure the impact? How do you get to see those stats? There is a Microsoft dashboard for uh, leaders within a company, and you can get to see exactly who's using it and where the efficiency gains are. So in line with uh, Backbone Connect, uh, where there is a three-phased approach, and if you want to, you can also speak to the, the team here about the co-pilot workshops and M365 workshops, and they really help you get AI ready look at the adoption process, ensure that the security and data parameters are met, and then help you with that employee engagement and, and helping with the culture. With Copilot, it is you get as much back as you put in. And to help you with that, we uh, there is a Copilot lab. There are multiple, multiple prompts that you can use. Um, so again, there's a whole list there to, to help you with that. Um, from the early adoption, we've had some really great case studies come out. There is a, you know, a, a common feedback here. It's much about gains in productivity, getting that time back, um, not having to do the mundane. Um, and um, you'll see that across here. The savings, again, very much dependent on the department that you're working and the role that you have within the company. But anyone that's working on the creativity side um, is seeing some really big uh, gains um, from, from the use of Copilot. So how do you get started? Starts with security, privacy and compliance. Speak to the team at Backbone Connect. They've got their 360 security assessment. 
They can also help with your co-pilot and M365 assessment and workshops as well. But AI is a new way of working and it really does have the opportunity to transform companies, but without having a negative impact on security. For those of you who are leaders and thinking, actually, yeah, we do see uh, AI, we want to bring it into our business, we understand it can transform. Um, how do we do that? What resources are there for us to kind of look at how we get this done? Um, Microsoft have put together a work lab for you, so uh, do, uh, do investigate that. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you back to our lovely John and um, over to you. Thank you, Millie. Fantastic update. Love the music. Uh, yes, you could see me nodding along to that. Um, Joe, the first question we had, uh, although you'd um, uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, customer's data is a customer's data, what would uh, sort of typically what would be recommended or strong security foundations if an organization was going to adopt Copilot? How can we uh, get, get a good handle on privacy and, uh, and compliance? If you could unmute, buddy, that would be great. That's a great question, John. Uh, to really ensure the, the security and the safe rollout of Copilot and to make sure that you get great outcomes from that rollout, there are a couple of elements to consider. First uh, is where that data sits today. Is it up in the cloud? Because, of course, accessibility to Copilot means that it needs to be in places that users can have access to. The Copilot and the Graph API can be able to index and to provide insight around. And so making sure that's located in the cloud. And then as part of it, in typical user deployments, we're using SharePoint or OneDrive for that process. And this is where tying together your security around your Entra AD, your Active Directory AD groups, the teams groups that you have and ensuring that people have the right access now using that mechanism doing this if you will an access review or an audit would definitely be recommended the last thing i would recommend for organizations to look at privacy and label tagging so within microsoft 365 especially within um, office 365 exchange sharepoint etc you can create data labels being able to identify what kind of information is company confidential, public, sensitive, meaning client confidential in some regard, or of course private and maybe personal information that's on company resources, but being able to separate those in information into some basic categories like that can really help organizations ensure that that information that is being used to generate a press release comes from publicly available information and not privately available information. And so it's going to net much better outcomes for AI to provide the answers to the questions and the prompts that you're looking for. That's great. Thank you very much for that clarification. Again, just, just making sure that our customers have got a, a track to run on, really, if it's the uh, feedback from the poll earlier where uh, there's a, a widespread adoption of the, the suite of applications that we're all familiar with, uh, but looking for um, embarking on a journey to leverage this um, new, you know, new co-pilot technology. What were the kind of first steps on the ladder be? Uh, well, definitely starting with that security assessment, understanding how well you've got the basic security technologies in place. Um, to you go through that journey, it's customers start by implementing things such as zero trust foundations and those are things such as implementing secure identities making sure that you have threat defense deployed so that you can potentially detect if a breach occurs and that you have the right data controls in place and being able to protect all of that our 360 assessment is actually a great place to get started because it's going to look at all of those different elements as well as of course our core network security the things you probably know us for most of all um, but being able to look at that as part of the bigger picture and being able to give customers a top-down view of security from there uh, they, we have a couple of different options for customers where they can continue this journey uh, we have um, live co-pilot and m365 workshops will be conducting later this month and next month uh, happy to reserve a seat this is going to give customers a live 
hands-on experience with some of these technologies, get a chance to see what that looks like in reality and potentially deploying within their organization and pretend and how to start a pilot program. Um, a lot of organizations today, especially with the announcement of Copilot for general availability in mid-January, have started rolling out one to 10 users of Copilot. Backbone Connect is, is among them, if you will. And so being able to see what those productivity gains can be and start to implement that pilot, if, if you will, in a safe and secure way, big piece of that. So happy to, to help customers with that as well. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, look, time is, um, uh, is pressing on. I've had no further uh, questions in the chat so far. Um, it'd be fair to say that, uh, you know, all of the um, uh, attendees today will provide links so they can reach out for a uh, you know, consultation, uh, have the um, opportunity to conduct a 360 assessment with us and yeah, start that uh, start that exciting, uh, exciting journey in, in 2024. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Millie uh, for supporting us from a Microsoft and a, a Bytes perspective, Anisha for your customer insights. Joe, for your updates on security here at Backbone Connect, and thank the audience for your uh, particip participation today. So we'll see you in a, a future webinar uh, and follow up via uh, via email. But uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll wish you a good day. Thank you, John. Thank you, John.